Um, well, I'm in a better mood than I was last week, so <laughs> that's a that's a good thing. I, you know, it's uh, it's been a it's been kind of a topsy turvy year. You know, it feels like sometimes it feels like every other day we don't know who's going to be in. I know y'all think I'm lying when I come in here now, and then we and then we end up putting somebody out there and they do well, but um, uh, I'm not. And and these are these are things that have been. Um, you know, that have kind of thwarted our traction a little bit just because we hadn't been able to consistently put the same lineup out there. And, and I thought tonight was we needed this meet. I, I think um, one of y'all asked me earlier in the week, do you need this meet? Yeah, I think you see why we needed it. And I think it, what it does for us is um, kind of resets our footing a little bit and sends us off into the postseason with – a lot more confidence. And I, the, the whole week I was challenging them to believe they were elite, to believe they were great, to believe that they could compete with, with anybody and not get in awe of other teams' rosters and and to, to be able to, um, you know, see see what they want to want to accomplish in their mind, be able to say it and acknowledge it and then believe it. And and and, and, and that, that was the biggest challenge um, that we issued to them this week. And they did a great job of sustaining. It's the best meet we've had all year. It's better than the Alabama meet by, by a long shot. doesn't mean we were completely mistake-free, uh, but it means that the sustained energy was there throughout, and that was, that was key to tonight. Uh, you bookended that statement with the consistent energy. But aside from that, what else made this meet better than your performance against Alabama? I just think the, I just think the intent. You could see it in their eyes tonight. They were – uh, they were in a much better place. Um, headspace, people call it. That's kind of a catchphrase word now. But but just hurt their mental approach this week. Plus, we we had a consistent week in the gym. We were able to we were able to get a little more into our rhythm. We had some people like Haley didn't get to do everything, and not everybody got to do everything. But it, as a group, we were able to get back into our our rhythm that we like to be in prior to a competition, and uh, we were relatively drama free all week and that's always a plus it just allows them to settle in and and um and be able to do what they did tonight i've talked to y'all before about how we come out of a meet we come down and then we try to ramp that back up so that we can peak and you don't think that three workouts which is our our training schedule between meets can really dictate that but it does and if you if you handle it correctly it, it really can kind of create sort of a, a rhythm throughout a season this is what your second 198 here at home, and I think you heard what around a third performance yeah. of getting there. How do you carry that kind of performance on the road or neutral sites now? Well, I think I think really I don't I don't get too hung up on scores when they're too high, and I don't get too hung up on them always when they're too low. I thought when we were in Missouri, I thought we had a pretty doggone good meet. You know, um, you, I can't control that. I'm not worried about it, but I can tell you the performance quality was there, and the performance quality was there tonight, and the and the focus was there, and the landings were there, and we. You know, we, we, we looked much more disciplined um, t today than, than, than we had looked um, in, in a couple of weeks. So it just uh, – I think it does. It just propels us. It's a good confidence thing. Confidence is a tricky thing. It can escape you very quickly if, if, you, if you go through a little bit of a rough patch. And that was my concern coming out of last week was that, you know, I didn't want them to kind of lose their, their mojo. And, um, and they were able to recapture that tonight. And sometimes having a team like – when you have a, a team like Utah, which is – uh, without a doubt, one of the top three or four teams in the country on, on the floor, it kind of raises your level, and I think it gave us the shot in the arm that we needed um, to propel us to SEC. So we go to Birmingham, and <clears throat> we'll be on a podium, and we just hope that we continue to improve in, in our health and see where let's see where the chips fall. Uh, yeah, a word, if you would, about uh, your, your seniors tonight. Uh, they, all, they all did yeah. very well or yeah. pretty, pretty well, and especially – Sarah Edwards, yeah. I mean, just uh, wow! I mean, to, to come through at a career high in her last, and, and it was legit. That I mean, Sarah Edwards' score was legit. That I didn't. There wasn't anything to take. I mean, it just was super well done. Performed. She landed everything cleanly. No foot faults anywhere that I could that I could ascertain. It, it just was. Uh, I was proud of the seniors in general. I'm proud of all of them. You know, I, I'm proud of Reagan Campbell who didn't get to go and and. Um, just the way she's um, adapted to this and in a tough time for her personally, she's remained a, a significant part of our team. I'm proud of all of them. We were able to get Rebecca D'Antonio up there in, in an exhibition. I know it didn't go exactly the way she wanted, but, you know, she's put her time in and she's she's been a big, big part of the 
the glue um, for our team and, and keeping them together. And so a lot of good things happened out there tonight um, with the seniors. Um, you know, sometimes seniors can press and try to be too good, but I think they, they handled it tonight. Yeah, as far as uh, Alona and uh, Kaya, uh, were their performances tonight about what you expected, being the fact that they're coming yeah. off injuries? Yeah, I thought Alona did everything we could have asked for and more. We didn't know literally till yesterday if she was going to vault. And um, she vaulted for the first time in three weeks on Monday. Then we took Tuesday off to uh, make sure the knee was tolerating everything that we were asking of her. And then she went again yesterday and did a great job. Both the one and a half, Sarah Edwards and – and Alona did not land well, and that's a consistent problem for them. And it's been because we can't do too many numbers. So we're, we're not able to really dial in on the landing an awful lot. We kind of got to, you know, just kind of talk them through it. And and um, so you hope that that rectifies itself as we get into the postseason and we can we can get a little more, uh, little more dialed in on the one-and-a-half landings. But – when you finish up with the with those hammers at the end the way they did tonight, you know, the, the Yurchenko double full from Kaya that was planted. I don't know what they took on that. And and then Haley doing what she did again. Um, you just – you have a comfortable place when you know that even if not every vault lands perfectly, um, you you know that you've, you've got, uh, you've got some, some big ones coming. So – Touch on it a little bit there at the end, but – you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Haley's third vault, third ten on vault of the season. Just, Is that it? Yeah, I, I think so. But uh, you know, just can you expand on what that means to have someone with that type of consistency? Well, I mean, here's the thing: if you if you get in trouble and you know she's got that level of consistency at that high level, you know that you got something that's going to snatch you out of the fire. So it's comfortable. It makes everybody else comfortable because then they can compete a little freer. They're not pressing. They're not trying to do too much because they know even if they have a mistake there's there's big scores behind them that and so it, it keeps everybody in a little bit of a freer mindset and it's um it's tremendous and not every team has that there's a lot of teams that can go you know nine nine at the end of their lineup there's not many that have those two the potential for both of those vaults can go 10 kai has gone 10 on vault before too and both of those vaults can go 10 so uh it's a it's a very very comfortable place to be on that event when you know those two are back there Jay, you've had uh, you know two extremes as far as crowd attendance your first two years here. Last year was COVID, and now you have the first time ever yeah. beating the country and attendance yeah. average. How do you feel about what the fans have brought this year? It's just it's ridiculous. The, the, our fan base, is, as you know, everybody here knows, LSU fans are without a doubt. And I've been to every every school in this conference. I've been to football games. I've been LSU fans are different. They, they bring a different level of noise. They bring a different level of enthusiasm. They're the most ardent support. Now, they expect you to win, but but if you do, they're going to bring it for you. And and our fans have shown us that tonight, I mean, this whole season, really. And, um, you know, I just – we feel an obligation to perform well for them, and, uh, and we want to encourage them to keep coming. We're not done growing, and we want our fan base to continue to grow. I want to – I my vision is that one day this place is sold out every time we open the doors. And, um, and, and that's, that's the goal.